I love to sit around the farm. Yeah, it's hot, but I love to sit around the farm. Well, I don't talk much about the farm, you know, as far as like little small fires. But I love sitting around them. I really do. I've been out here all day. Uh, well, not all day. That makes it sound like I'm working harder than I am. I've been trying to cut up some trees from a branch that I, some branches I cut off. So, I had some thoughts to cross my mind, and before I start, I want to go here. I want to walk over here and show you, those of you that cut trees and you are going to tell me that I was an idiot, and you're right. I was cutting this limb right here, this, this one right here that's closest to us. Uh, yesterday and I know I shouldn't have but I was cutting it from a ladder now you see these little shoots right here you see those so I had my ladder in the ground and I had the top of it rested and I, I knew I was thinking to myself man this is what could be the worst case scenario that could happen and the worst case scenario was that the, the limb was probably uh, I don't know I guess it's eight inches through and it's probably uh, 20 feet full of brush uh, there was a bunch of brush hanging off of it and um those of you that says man you look awful rough in this video hold that thought uh i start cutting on the limb and the limb splits and then i, I stopped so i proceeded to cut it and when i did it had pushed against the bank or against the ground back into me that was going to push me off the ladder against the tree, the weight of the limb falling on me, I don't know how many hundreds of pounds it was, and maybe into the creek, probably broke bones or whatever. So knowing that this was the worst case scenario, I said a little prayer. God, I know I'm stupid. I know I shouldn't do this, but I need to cut this and I don't have the proper stuff. So I climb up, sure enough, worst case scenario, it hits me. So the Lord says, yes, you're right. That was not the right thing to do it, but I'm going to spare you this time, so don't do it again. Y'all still wondering what this video is about. So I posted and I said, I've got an urge for a video. And I get this urge a lot of times when I, when I come out and work. I've just never put it, put it down yet or recorded it. So I'm working away, right? And I'm looking. And, and let's see if I can flip back around. You see that one little shoot? I think that's the one that was holding me. I'm not real sure. You see this tree? I don't know how old it is. I don't know when it was planted. I do know this. That tree was planted or grew or whatever long before. And when it did, it came up. And God Almighty put that little shoot sticking out of that tree right there. And it grew, and it was right there, and it's what held my ladder once the limb come into me. The ladder was bowed, Danny was with me, and it about kicked me off there. But here's where I want to go with this. My question was, an urge for a video, and what's the, pri what's the title going to be? Who is Jesus to you? Or, and what does a Christian look like? Gina Quillen put on there... <laughs> I know if anybody would, would comment, she would, and I, I need to do more of these videos, I know. She said, sounds like you got two of them. Well, actually, I don't. It's the same video. Here's what I want to tell you. I don't know if I can get this thing to... I can't zoom in or out, but I want you to look. Look at me. Filthy. Pouring the sweat. I'm a little raggedy old hat. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see that shirt. Shady Valley County Store, Shady Valley, Tennessee. A little snake on it's Ride the Dragon. It's a motorcycle shirt. Got on some old khakis. Got on some old boots that I've had for a long time. And so I got to thinking, I, and I think this all the time because I'm out here and I'm listening to music and I'm looking at the, the creation that God has and what He's done and what He's. And I'm thinking, reflecting on what happened in the tree. That the tree that was planted so long ago that only that lives and dies by His word and His command. That same tree. Had one little shootout that held my ladder that kept that thing from pushing off and, and, and causing potentially causing some harm. It it put a big bruise down my uh, belly. I'll spare y'all the, the, the side of that. Danny thinking it, that it may have hurt me bad or whatever, but it was all because what God had done. So here's the question, and what is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? My question is this. Is he just some guy? Is he just some dude that's 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 so holy that 
every time that he walks around he's glowing and he don't really touch the ground and he just floats and you can't get to him and he's, he's somebody that's that's so mythical and somebody that's so spiritual somebody so powerful but you can't reach him but you can't get hold of him because the bible says that he is not without reach that that his head his ears not so heavy he don't hear us when we reach up he's reaching down he's always there for us that's the jesus i'm so the jesus that saved me from this tree that i cut by my own mistakes you see it wasn't because i done something and it was i knew better I knew better. I knew I could have got hurt and I almost got hurt. And the only reason I didn't get hurt was by the grace of God. But here's where I want to go with this. Who is Jesus to you? And I, go, I want to go back just for a minute. I want to go back to the fire. Because the Bible says that one night, Jesus is eating supper. We, we call it the Last Supper. Jesus is eating supper with his disciples. As somebody's going to betray him. He's talking about all this stuff that's going on. And while he's, while he, after he goes through all this, you know, Judas skips up and walks away and all the disciples are worried and he, they go off to the garden, the Bible says. I don't know if they had a fire built. I don't know. I just started thinking about it. But I do know this, that while they were in the garden, what does a Christian look like? You know, we say Christian means Christ. Like, what does a Christian look like? I got old scraggly old, I ain't shaved in a couple days, a white beard, looking rough. I don't really like some preacher, minister, anything like that that God's going to use out here the way the, the way the world looks at it. But here's what I'm going to say to you. What does a Christian look like? Because here's what happened. And this just blows me. And I know, I know I'm going to have some people get mad. I probably want me to speak, make some comments. There's probably want people to talk some ignorant stuff. But back it up with the Bible before you post. And don't be using all this stuff about and just taking small verses and snippets. I want to see the whole Bible. Because we are to come out of the world and to be separate. The Bible says be separate. It don't say act separate, dress like and imitate separate. It says to be separate. So here's what I want to tell you is when they went to the garden after that, after the Last Supper, after everything had transpired, everything went on, Judas was on doing his thing, Judas comes in. But here's what the Pharisees said to Judas. We're going to give you 30 pieces of silver, but here's what we need from you. We need you to let us know who he is. Would you please let us know? If you don't mind, would you just walk up and give Jesus... A kiss, the Bible says that he came along. Judas walks up. He walks among the rest of them. You know that he's looking all out of sorts. Everybody's looking at him wondering, where'd you run off to? He's coming back. He's walking. He's got his eyes focused solely on Jesus. He's wondering what he's doing. He's got 30 pieces of silver that's heavier than, than any other 30 pieces of silver that he's ever carried. And he's wanting to handle the money. So in the midst of all this, he's going over and he's feeling the weight of the 30 pieces of silver. He's weighing everything on his heart. He reaches up and he kisses Jesus on the cheek. Jesus says, Judas... Trust thou me with a kiss? You know why Jesus said that? So that he would say that you betrayed me so that they would know. So why didn't they know? Why didn't the Pharisees know who Jesus was? When they came to him, why was it that he had to kiss them? Why was it that they didn't know? I'll tell you why it's why he didn't know. Because he probably had on, if he did wear what we wore today, he probably had on an old t-shirt, some old khakis and some old boots that he's had for about 15 years. He may have had on an old raggedy old hat. He may not have shaved in a little bit. He may have looked like an average person. But let me tell you what that average person did. That average person went right on up. They betrayed him. They beat him. He's, he was at the cross and he shed his blood on the, on the beaten post. They put him up on a tree. They hung him high. And, they, and they, they killed my Savior. The one that looked just like everybody else. The one that looked just like it, you and I. The one that looked just like normal people. But the man who made the difference. Because you see, when it says be a separate people, it don't mean to dress and imitate. It means in your heart you are to be a separate person. So when I'm out here and I'm cutting down trees and I'm cutting weeds and I'm trying to take care of this property and I'm trying to do all that I'm trying to do... You know what I'm doing? I'm giving God glory because He gave me what I've got. Now, I'm going to spin it around. This is the old house that we lived in. This is Danny's house, and then this is my house. I want you all to see these things. And as you're looking around and you say, man, it don't look like much, that's not a whole lot of something. Let me tell you what it is. It's something that God gave me. He's blessed me with, and it's something that He wants me to take care of. And that's why you find me down here sweating. That's why you find me down here praising God. And that's why you find me cutting all this stuff up, giving Him thanks for what He's given me. Because I could have been in a hospital. I could have been somewhere else. But you know what? My Savior that died for me. The one that in the beginning spoke and said, let there be. The Bible says that he is the word. And if you look at this tree behind me, he's the one that spoke this tree into existence. And he's the one that designed it exactly the way that he did. That's my Jesus. And look at me. I can't hold this thing back far enough. You want to know what a Christian looks like? You're looking at it. With my raggedy old clothes. 
my raggedy old hat, but a savior in my heart. We gotta quit telling people. We gotta quit trying to be so legalistic. We gotta quit trying to tell everybody. You got to be, you got to look holy. You got to imitate holy. Why are they going around the hatefulest people in the world? I'm gonna say it. Y'all know me, I don't care to say it. I, I've worked in retail many, many years. And I'm trying to keep this video short, but I've worked in retail many, many years. And I'm going to be honest with you. When the people comes in on Sunday, when I've had to work and I couldn't make it to church, but I'm praising God that I got a job and I'm praising God. And I'm talking to customers about the Lord and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing because it's all inside of my heart. But Jim, that crowd comes in. You know the crowd I'm talking about. They come in after church. You're looking at them. Everything's all dressed. They're dressed in their Sunday best. They're doing the best they can. And I'm telling you right now, it is the hatefulest bunch of people that God ever put on this earth. Because they imitate the part. Don't walk around saying, look at me, I look like Jesus. Walk around and saying, I am Jesus. Because we are the body. We are the body. of You are the Jesus that this world is going to see, and that is the only one. They're going to feel him, and they're going to, and they're going to witness his move. But you're the only Jesus that they're going to see. Now, I'm not saying run out here and dress all, all provocative and show off everything you got because that's ungodly, and you got some Bible verses for that, and I got some Bible verses for that. But can we quit trying to tell people that the only way you can talk to if somebody pulled in my yard right now and they need a prayer, I don't got to run in and change and put on a tie so that I can come out and pray for somebody. Because I believe when Jesus was sitting by the far and he told Peter, feed my sheep, I believe that he was sitting just like the rest of them. And that's all I'm trying to do is feed his sheep. Who is Jesus to you? Is he real? Is he somebody? And in that same question, if he is in you and he is who you say that he is, then what do you look like? Because it don't matter how you, it's not about what you dress. It's not about running around with a, I'm a Christian. T if you have to have a t-shirt to tell people you're a Christian, you might want to go back and check it. Because you got some problems. I'm going to cut this video because I don't want to keep them too long. But I want you all to know, Jesus is here in the heart, not in the clothes. Not in what you drive, not in your car. He's in your heart. And if we're going to be a separate people, let's be a separate people. Because the time we're living in right now, it's time to have church in your yard. It's time to have church at your business. It's time to have church in your car. Because he's coming back. I love y'all. Thank y'all for watching.